Okay, it's mixed for six minutes. I'm going to put it on my stopwatch and start. That's very key. Anytime you're working with resin, not any for any project, I just say keep your stopwatch on from the moment you finish mixing just to keep an eye on the working time because if you're doing anything like a bloom a 3D effect or anything like that, you always want to be cognizant of your time. But even so, if you're not even worried about things like that, just keep an eye on your time because sometimes you can kind of be taking your time and then all of a sudden your resin is getting warm and uh, you can have flash curing, things like that happen. So just always keep an eye on your time once it is fully mixed. Okay, so I've got uh, caulking out on my board that is probably about 14 inches. I put the thick vinyl 4 mil. This was a um, vinyl tablecloth cover that's clear and shiny. And I pulled it nice and tight on opposite sides with masking tape. And it even went around to the other side a little bit. Um, so this is my barrier and the silicone is 100% waterproof caulking. You can use indoors, outdoors, it doesn't matter as long as it's waterproof and silicone. I want to make sure it's nice and shiny. There's no residue or dust or anything that's accumulated. This vinyl tablecloth came from Amazon. Unfortunately it was folded so that like here's the corner of a fold. There's a little pucker. I'm, I'm hopefully not going to be worried about that so much. Um, I've got some crushed shells in a bag and they're in that beautiful color range of like peacock colors. Okay, So I've got two ounces of the shells and I'm just gonna Sprinkle them around the outskirts. You don't have to use two ounces. You could use a little less. You don't. You don't want overkill. You just want kind of a pretty border. So you're gonna use your hands to just spread it out a little bit and make sure that there's no shells like piled on top of each other. You can kind of see where the gaps are where you need to add more. I absolutely love these colors together. There's other combinations of colors you can get. You can get a, just a solid color of crushed shells. I like a little variety, especially with the technique that I'm going to use today. And I am going to put a little bit right in the middle too, just for a little bit of a center piece, but it's not going to not going to be a whole lot. You don't want any really thick pieces. You want them kind of nice and flat. So if anything's got a chunk to it, just replace it with a flatter piece. Okay. I'm going to take a cup and put maybe about maybe about an ounce. Leave that aside for white. Gonna pour right around the edge of this mold. And get it about even as far as well, we're gonna put clear in the whole way, so Start over the center, just kind of work our way out. You don't want the resin to be as high or as thick as your mold that you've made around the edge. If you were using a silicone mold tray, you would not want it to be as thick as the silicone tray is. You want it to be thinner because we're going to freeform this bowl. So you want some flexibility. And if you don't 
if you pour it too thick it's so much harder to bend it and you can end up cracking your piece so it's you know more recommended that you go thinner versus thicker I'm kind of evening out and moving my shells around just a bit make sure that they're nice and up against that edge for the the edge of the bowl make sure none are on top of each other so again this was probably about six ounces so now we're going to take this ounce we have right here I don't have a little bottle of white alcohol ink by Jacquard Pinata but I've got a big bottle so I'm just going to put I would have say that would be around four to six drops of white alcohol ink and then you can use cast and craft white you can use armor art white so I'm putting a little squeeze in there not a whole lot I'm at 12 minutes on my time since I've mixed finished mixing the resin since I finished we're going to drop alcohol inks in here and you don't want to really heat it much afterwards with um, fire because sometimes the alcohol inks will catch on fire I'm also like putting it up to the light and I want it to look just a bit transparent that's why I add the alcohol ink I'm going to go in and I'm going to use a different one and I'm going to put just a few more drops so I want it a little more transparent than opaque it just gives it, it gives it a lacier look and it's not quite so heavy I can reuse this cup later to mix resin up again in a future project I don't reuse the cups that I mix put parts A and B in because they're sticky and tacky and they're not mixed together and cured so you can't really save those cups okay so that's my white and it's ready to go I could totally put a little bit of uh, sparkle white or something in there for some uh, shimmer but I'm, I'm not going to do it this time I always have baby wipes around there they're a must okay so I see something I've dripped into my piece so I'm going to remove anything that might have dripped I'm teaching a class and we're going to be using lighters so I'm going to use that this time I don't like these things but the last time I did a test piece like this I uh, used a heat gun and then my resin wouldn't come off the plastic it was very difficult that's why I put a little bit of the mold release and I'm not using a heat gun which can damage your molds but even with plastic it can hinder you getting your piece off of your plastic so I'm getting rid of all my little tiny bubbles and if the, the flame kind of touches the surface that's okay and we can spritz it at the end with alcohol to get rid of any final bubbles so I've got purple and kind of a teal color and a green color and I'm going to use Brie Reese I'm going to use Kelly Green, Teal and Purple and I'm going to start on the outer edge I'm going to drop the four points last time I did one like this I, I think I used way too much alcohol ink it was crazy so I'm gonna let these just kind of sit and spread a bit then I'm gonna come in with the teal and maybe go in between but inwards a little bit let it spread and then in between those I'm going to do the limeier green 
so I can go back and I can do another little drop just but these are going to come in close together just because they're in a closer proximity of each other I could go you know between the green put a little drop in even where there's not space I touched the resin I'm just cleaning off my nozzle there Okay, so on the outskirts, I didn't do a, a, an aqua color. I'm going to use Pinata Baja, and I'm going to go in between the purple. I totally used the wrong green there. I wanted this color. So I kind of messed up on that. So I could even go back in throw a drop of this inside that. Okay, I'll go back and try to make these a little bit bigger. Maybe add one more drop. Hopefully that'll help it expand a bit. Come on. I don't know why I do that. I, I get ahead of myself and then do something I don't want to do. Okay. So with this, you could totally leave it the way it is with the little dots, or you can even come through when you can kind of drag the color around and come down. Kind of come through the middle. And it kind of just blends things a bit. And because these are kind of more blotchy as far as that goes, I'm going to just kind of go through a little bit. Kind of help blend them a bit. Okay. Now we're at 20 minutes. I'm going to take this white, squeeze the cup in, and I'm going to go around the outside with a pretty healthy line right along the edge of those shells. I'll do another healthy line about right there. And try to, to ease up on your drips so it doesn't get like a heavy drop. We'll do one right here. Get it to taper off if you can. I'm going to go around the center. Thicken this one up a little bit. If you get a little drip, you can take it out or you can just pretty much leave it. It's not going to screw things up really. I'll just finish it off around the edge here. I am going to uh, go right here to get some of that purple back. It's gone too far. So just trying to scoot it in a bit, if it will. And it may not. That's okay. So let me put some white back here. Now typically after I do this I would use a heat gun, but I'm not going to this time. Also because I'm teaching a class and we're not going to have heat guns to use, so I don't want to use 
a heat gun because I can't do it then either. I'm going to try the flame just for a little movement of the white, but you be, have to be very careful because it's alcohol inks. Don't, don't get it too, too close. Just where you see bubbles, maybe just around the white areas. We can totally take a stick and we can kind of drag it in a little bit. So I, I did the four points. I like to wipe off so it doesn't mix colors in with each other. And then go in between. You can even if you want to go in and kind of interrupt that line a little bit. Okay. Alright, so that's pretty much it. And we're going to let it sit for maybe about three hours. I will check it after three hours. And of course, you want to cover it with a net, Pesa food net, or whatever you have to cover. I'm going to take my alcohol, 91% alcohol, and spritz. And th that actually creates little patterns in your alcohol inks, which is kind of cool. Um, so I'm spritzing it to get rid of air bu uh, bubbles or any bubbles that surface to the top, but it also makes a little pattern in your alcohol inks, which is kind of cool. But that's it. I'm going to cover it, let it sit. You do want to check out your surface, make sure you don't have any dust or anything laying on top, and then totally cover it, and we'll be back. Okay, it's been about six hours, and I'm going to go ahead and try to get this off. Off this plastic. If you can get one spot started, that's part half the battle. Don't know why this vinyl wants to stick to my resin. I do not know why. But I don't know if you can see that, but it's so pretty. Just put it on top of white so you can see. It almost looks like a palm tree or something kind of pattern. And here's the reverse side, which is kind of cool too. It's got the uh, the white that's come through. The white doesn't really show up on this side in here, but it does along the edge, which is really pretty. So you don't see this part. So it depends on if you want your bowl to face up and show it that way or up and show it that way. And I think I'm going to leave it this way, showing up that way. So that means that I will place it on my form and I'm going to center it right around there this is a little thicker probably than I would have liked to have poured it so no more than six ounces for a successful bowl okay I love the colors of this. I really do. Uh, I love the crushed shells, the colors of the crushed shells. So you can see it kind of through the plastic what it's going to look like. So this one, I still had to wait quite a while 
for the resin and that's not typical and I don't know if it's because it's really been hot and we've had a lot of rain and it's been humid and I keep my window open so maybe that affects the curing time. I'm going to set this out to cure overnight. And I'm going to take it down to the rest of the house where the temperature is a little bit more. It doesn't fluctuate as much. So I'll try it down there to cure. And we will unveil this baby tomorrow. Can't wait. See you in a minute. Okay. So it's been overnight. And... Um, this has been on my form, my wonky form that I got from Dollar Tree. And you just pry it off because it's slick and shiny and hard. It comes off super easy. And here is the bowl. It almost looks like a lotus plant in the middle. That's actually really, really pretty. I like it. I love the colors. It's even lovely to me on the bottom side. This is one of the few that I actually like both sides. Um, from the sides I love this part which is so, I don't know, it's just it's really pretty to me. But you get to see more of the actual shells on the inside. So I'm very pleased with this. I hope you learned something from this video, as with any video, and I hope my class gets to have fun doing this project. I will keep you posted. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.